Hello everybody and welcome back. It's Creative Redency back again, also known as CR. And on this live stream, or if you're catching a replay static video, it's gonna be about chatting about well some chit chat too, but about multi purpose or multi type of function or functional type of items or gear. Now I'm no expert in survivalism, bushcrafting, or preparedness. Just trying to learn more and put that knowledge and skill, I guess, too, into something constructive. So yeah, this is gonna be a chat discussion with examples too about functions or usefulness or multi-purpose or function something is. Now this can vary from item to item of course and the reason you want to use it for a task or function may vary. Now in the primary um, type of functions for either creating or for survival type of reasons. And like anything item gear it has its own characteristics with its own pros and cons. Alright, I'm gonna whip out the side chat here so I can actually see what's going down. Let me bring this to the side here. So let me welcome everyone with a big welcome and smiley face. I appreciate anyone that can drop by on the live stream to catch it live, obviously too. And of course if you're watching this on a replay, thank you for taking the time to watch it afterwards. I appreciate it very much so. So, let's whip up the intro here. <laughs> if I can click it right. Hey everyone, welcome. I figure I might as well put the YouTube sticker out, a YouTube magnet. Uh, let me position it here. I'm just going to position it right there in the center. I'm going to use it as a space marker so I know where I am, so, you know, I'm in frame and all that stuff. So multifunction or multi-use items. Now I'm going to direct this into either cr cr helping to create something or for survival reasons. So stuff like uh, shelter, cover, clothing, fire, light heat, maybe even smoke too, water, hydration, <clears throat> keeping cool, regulating core body temperature, which shelter and cover and clothing do also, <clears throat> pardon me, food, obviously, because every organism, everybody on the planet needs, well, water too, but energy to burn. <laughs> You know, to maintain, you know, uh, being able to do stuff, or right? need energy to do this stuff. And of course, safety and security. So, you know, being able to help yourself if you cut yourself, defend yourself, feel, be, feel like, feel safe. Uh, orientation so basically you know like knowing where you are 
and in relation to everything else that's around you. Of course, uh, transportation. <laughs> so you gotta be able to move. And coming back to the orientation, I almost forgot so, something like a map and compass, for example. And if you need to, uh, communication. So people actually know where you are or know what you're doing or have an idea of what's going on in your head. So messages and stuff like that. So clearly like, you know, writing, for example. Now I actually did a whole live stream on that topic, which I'll try to like and screen it in here a little afterwards after it's been processed and all that stuff so I'm gonna start with probably something that most people can agree is fairly multi-purpose hence why it's generically known as a multi-tool so let's so multi-tool right here there's an arrow one right there now that sh that also includes I, can, I just gotta get off my keys here oh, anyways I'll just show it here so something like this Victorinox for coop that I have. I also consider this as a multi-tool just because, well, it's multifunctional and has more than one tool. So I guess I would call this multi-tool also. Not just uh, multi-tools with pliers. I mean, there's are multi-tools that have scissors instead of pliers. There's a whole host of multi-tools, lots and lots, different brands and all that stuff they have different tools on them I mean a lot of them have you know pliers like this Gerber one I have here maybe a file a saw serrated Phillips straight edge flathead can bottle opener some of them have a lanyard knife, uh, needles, pliers, wire cutters, so, of course these, some of them just, the tools are accessible on the outside and some of them aren't. Now that also includes, if I can get it out of my pocket here, like a multi-tool, like smaller multi-tool tools too. Uh, has tweezers, bottle opener, stuff like that. Some of them have scissors too. Now I'm gonna use these multi tools to kind of um, explain how I see multifunctional or multi-purpose items. Just like a multi tool, a multi tool is great for doing a lot of things I mean such as this Gerber right here that I have I mean I could do so much now in relation to like creating well I got tools right cut wire slice something cut something file down something put a Phillips uh, screw in a flathead screw into something or whatever now in, in terms of survival, relating it to those seven things that I was talking about, something like this, I mean, I could be using this to pull like a biking cable if I like break the transmission or whatever, right? And also, let's say you have a can opener on your multi-tool and I can help you with the food part by being able to get into a can of food like beans etc etc 
Of course, the, the, the knife, well, or the cutting tool on it. Obviously, you can make fender sticks for like fire, for example. Cut cordage, such as like paracord, any type of rope. Maybe even fish, well, I'll get to that in a sec, but so for shelter reasons, cut your fishing line. So, food. And of course, like a tool like this could be used for self defense type of reasons, also. So let me put this away here real quick. I should have put them on the screen right here. Now, <clears throat> like I said, multi tools are great for doing a lot of things. Like, you have something similar to this, you know, there's a lot of brands Weatherman, SOG, SOG, countless brands. One thing relatively remains true with multi tools. Is like I said, they're gr great for doing a lot. And they're good at doing a lot of things, but they may not specifically do anything very specific, great. Or the multi tool you have isn't gonna cut it, isn't gonna work for that task or application for whatever reason. So, for example. <clears throat> And these multi tools have, um, like, um, what's it called? Uh, a screwdriver, like a Phillips head, flat head, such and such. Even on this little multi tool, it's got, you know, little flat head, little flat heads. I mean, I've used these for se several times before. But for something like opening up a battery compartment for like a kid's toy, for example, it might be too big. Even that small one that I just brought out might be too small. I mean, too big for the opening. Where you still need something more specific like a precision type of screwdriver like this right here where I can actually get in for example now I generally say if you, uh, the more multi purpose or function it is it's more likely to help you you know, with stuff like sh shelter, fire, water, food, safety, security, or orientation, knowing where you are in relation to everything else, and help you with the transportation part. Because I'll be using those as kind of check marks, be like, ooh, it can help with the fire, or it can help with the water, or something like that. So let me put these multi tools away right now before I forget. <laughs> hey Val. Hi Val. Yes, I, I specifically made this just for this live stream. I specifically made this high sign. <laughs> made from char cloth, lipstick, and nail polish. <laughs> oh, and a card. <laughs> so I'll leave that on the screen for a little sec. So, yes, and when that comes in, I'll be like, you guys are all gonna get a special high. Ooh, that's moving. <laughs> actually, I might actually might keep this around just for these live streams and stuff like that. Uh, 
Oh, you should know Val, I'm always in creation mode. <clears throat> All the time. All the time, even now. Even creating stuff just for the live stream. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> when you think of survival, or survivalism, bushcrafting, to a certain extent preparedness and prepping in general, <clears throat> you think of a tool, something that can help you, and many would consider it fairly multi-purpose. Now, it also depends on the tool itself, but... So, such as knife, like this Mora here. I've shown this off before. Oh yeah. And by the way, this is a uh, like when up to sixty year old knife. <laughs> now, character. Now, honestly, it's a cutting tool. So it may help you with fire, make uh, feather sticks. So feather sticks like this. Obviously this is small and you probably would need a lot more. But something like that. Now if it's a a fixed blade full tang, obviously you can uh, baton or batten wood with it to get to the inside of the dryer wood. Now, if the knife is larger, a little bit heavier, <clears throat> it can be used for chopping purposes and more to help you with shelter. And of course, you know, it's not going to be able to help you cut cordage, cut paracord, for example, or some sort of rope that you have. So anyways, so um, if you sand, sand or grind down the back side of the spine, you can use it to, as a scraper, a scraping for like uh, wood, for example. Uh, let's see, it should be able to do this. Oh yeah. So I'm just using the back, the 90 degree spine. To get shapings and also like this would take a little bit of time if I wanted to preserve <clears throat> the, the cutting edge for example now if this is a car high carbon steel type of knife you can use a piece of flint for example like or a quartz anything that has like a hardness on that scale that's higher than like what six six or seven I think quartz is about six and a half seven so basically it's got to be harder than the steel to remove the material and that uh, kind of going like this going fast enough <clears throat> for me you would get sparks coming off and that would help you with fire now of course a cutting tool like this or something similar could also be used with wood and probably some other stuff to make like notches in wood which I'm not going to do because it would take a little bit more time and I don't want to shit the camera to make some sort of figure 4 type of trap a primitive primitive type of trap for something like a uh, small game for example and of course in a knife can also help you with self-defense too, if need be, you know, that's the last resort, you know, do it at your own risk, you know, stuff like that, I don't have to explain much about that, you know what, why not, why not, I always like to see people in blue and not in gray on my channel. Oh, wait. I gotta remember. I gotta say hi. 
I'm gonna be low here. See, I wasn't kidding about when I said I was using nail polish. That's actually nail polish. Uh, right there is uh, lipstick and some char uh, cloth that I used to kind of darken it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. So a knife, I mean, like, a knife is helping you a lot with that. And of course, once you get access to fire, you can boil water. So, I mean, like, this is helping me, or it could help, in the safety and security defense, self-defense uh, category, the fire of starting category, the fire of category by making tinder, feather sticks and stuff like that, shavings. Can help me with shelter, especially the bigger it is, the heavier it is, where I can chop. I mean, this could extend beyond a knife to like an axe, hatchet, which are more capable of doing stuff. And of course, with the food too, if you want to make a primitive type of wood trap, like a figure four type of trap. For example. Oh yeah, that's quite alright, Wendy Love. I appreciate the channel support. However long you can stay for, I appreciate it. Alright. Let me just clear this off for it real quicker my space marker back there all right some more things that are multi purpose or multifunctional now the more uh, it overlaps on like these categories that I've been talking about the more multifunctional it is I mean and especially if you're using it for different tasks or whatever and it's helping you, well, you know, it's pretty useful. And to me, the more useful something is, the more multifunctional it is to me. Because I can, I can, you know, I could be using a cutting tool like this more here to be like, cutting like a package, package open that I get in mail, you know, for example, you know, uh, if you get something from like Amazon online and etc cetera, etc cetera, and eBay and you know or maybe you're very uh, fortunate and receive mail from other people which was which is also uh, which is always a blast it's always nice to get mail right <laughs> so you want to open up that packaging Maybe open up some blister packaging or whatever. Yes, exactly, Lindy Love. Multi use. Because it, it does more. It does more. For the space that it takes up, for a space that like a knife takes up, it's quite useful. Even beyond. Be, uh, even not considering the, the survival part of it, I mean, like opening envelopes, opening mail, packages, could be like a utility knife, if you're at work, for example, cutting boxes, because you gotta put it in a baler to like compress the cardboard gear, something like that, oh, you gotta cut that, slice down, or find the things, so you might cut it. Or, for example, if you're, um, if you enjoy couponing, you might not necessarily use a knife per se, you're probably more likely to use scissors in that case, because it's a little bit faster. But it's possible to use a knife to, you know, cut a coupon out. Ooh, hey, there's a free coffee coupon, I'm gonna cut it out. 
yeah, you can do it with, with a knife, but scissors are usually a little bit faster, and you get a clean cut. But that's saying you can't do it with a knife. And like I said, most of the time, with multifunctional tools, like a multi-tool, and some other things, it's gr it's good for doing a lot of things, but it might not specifically do something something specific great. So again, coming back to the multi-tool, oh, the multi-tool, I can't get it into the hole where the screw is, so I need a precision type of screwdriver. So I can actually get it in there and open up that kid's toy so I can change the battery, for example. Alright, I'm going to leave all answer that right now just because there's no, I'm going to leave there's no dumb questions with me. Because, you know, we're all here to learn. Not everyone knows everything. If we, if one person knew something, well, wouldn't they be like, you know, really, really awesome? <laughs> well, no dumb questions here. I mean, there's no stupid questions here. We're all just here to learn, like I said. So let's see. What uses could you use, or what could uses could you do with bubble wrap? Just asking because I have a whole bunch. Now nah, it doesn't sound dumb. Bubble wrap. I mean, <clears throat> now in terms of, for, for, I usually say anything can burn, and usually, you know. Anything can burn, so I usually can do more than just help me with fire. You know, I can melt plastic if I wanted to, and you know, blah 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 blah. But can it help me in the air categories? Now, bubble wrap. Now, depending on the bubble wrap. Now, there's ones with bigger bubbles and smaller ones, so its characteristics are a little bit different. <clears throat> But first and foremost, I guess you can probably use that for insulation. So that could help you with shelter or cover reasons. I mean, I've used bubble wrap before underneath a sh like my jacket to help me stay warmer in the winter time when it's minus 30 Celsius. I've done that before. I mean, you probably can make a little... If you had enough of it, and it's thick enough, you can lay it down, s similar to like um, a sleeping mat, or you could probably, if you had a little bit less, as a seating pad, so if you had to sit down on the snow, cold bench, at the bus shelter, it's cold out, or you have to sit somewhere else, right, and it's just like, freezing cold out and you know you don't want to be like oh I got a cold blood hey bubble wrap could help let's see what else not sure how it could help you in other categories now I guess if you had enough bubble wrap it might be possible for the water if to make a solar still it is transparent would might be possible I've never tried to make a solar still with bubble wrap because I usually, you know, I would take something else like glass or like uh, clear wrap, that kind of stuff, or a bag, for example, but um, it might help. So that's three categories right there. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, thanks, Lindy Love. I, I don't think I would have considered uh, bubble wrap for uh, a lot a solar still, but might be possible hey with that extra layer per se the bubbles it might keep the heat in more don't know I've never tried that so so this is why I like coming on live sometimes the interactivity you know as as much as I come up with ideas or how creative I am 
You know, I haven't thought of everything. Or maybe I did think of it before, then, you know, kind of put it on the side burner, then I'm like, oh. Someone reminds me of it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's... Might be possible. Might be possible. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. Like I said about anything. There's pros and cons, it has its own characteristics. It's hard to pack, it's, you can't really compress bubble wrap. I mean, I've used bubble, like I said, I've used bubble wrap to stay warm before. So, I guess it could be multi-functional, multi-purpose. Multi And I guess if you wanted to go send mail to someone, a package, you can use bubble wrap. Now a lot, nowadays they use that kind of, why, why, what's it, what's it called, uh, <laughs> the bubble wrap pillow or the air pillow things that they have or whatever. You'll see them with packages on like Amazon and stuff like that. Lots of people see that kind of stuff. See, exactly. Exactly. Not everyone thinks of everything at the at the same time. Or you just didn't consider it. Or maybe you don't have it because... Or for whatever reason, and you're like... You never really considered it because you never really had... Had it. Or had enough of it to play around with to just experiment test things uh, maybe to a certain degree to a certain degree I could see that you know they also have that reflective bubble wrap which is basically like bubble wrap but it's well got that foil like uh, reflection on it so, let's, if I went towards something like that, so the next step above, or something similar to bubble wrap, I mean, that could be used for signaling purposes, especially the larger it is. Could be, of course, with the shelter component, it could be used to reflect or reflect some light or a heat source away. Or towards you, depending how you see it. You know, winter time, I can use reflect the bubble wrap to like reflect some heat in, or reflect uh, thermal energy from a fire for like a greenhouse or a super shelter, for example. Hmm. You gotta explain the medical emergencies. When do you love? I'm not. Oh. Unless you mean something like shock or something like that. Maybe. Maybe. That'd be one of those situations where. You know, you're like, I hope I don't have to use this because I'm not sure about it. Like you can, you think about it, and you're like, oh, it could work, it should work, in theory it can work, but sometimes, unless you tested it, or tried it out, or proven it, you're right or wrong, it's just a theory, and theories can be disproved. Alright, so, continuing on here. And of course, if anyone's got any, any or items, now I'm going to be showing some items, but if you have things, multi-purpose items that you would consider, please leave them in the side chat or in the comments down below if you're watching this on the replay when it's static going on. Well. Bandana. Of course, everyone knows where this came from. 
because if you saw the video on the mail call, you would know where this came from. And of course, Wendy Love knows where this kind of came from. Just coming back from what Wendy Love just said. I'm not sure about that. Maybe, maybe, there might be, maybe. I, I'm not 100% sure. No, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Like, you think it would work, but, you know, sometimes just because you think it will work doesn't mean it'll necessarily work. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, maybe a Wendy Love. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Obviously, there's better options. <laughs> like this bandana. <laughs> but, and I'm not sure how many times you would only have bubble wrap and nothing else for bleeding purposes. Like, I'm just thinking, I'm like, if you were bleeding, would you... You're probably more likely to... Rip a piece of a shirt. Or something, like, your t-shirt. Or you might have something like a bandana nearby. Your hat. Or you actually, you know, actually have, you know, actual first aid type of things with you. I mean, it's not outside the realm of possibility, but probably not very likely to come across it. But hey, just like something else I'll show, if you got enough of it, you can do a lot. So. <laughs> anyways, anyways, coming back to the bandana here. And this is just a Ranger brand. Bicycle inner tube, similar to like a uh, elastic band, rubber band. Now, when you're getting these type of bandanas, and this will extend to some other stuff little that are similar, uh, I'm trying to get ones that are con. I've seen it at the dollar store in my area. I've seen them where it, sometimes it's polyester. And now, con a little bit more useful this now. Because I can char it. If it's con, I can char it and char cloth. That can help with fire. I can, if I really needed to, I could tease this fibers or fibrous to catch a spark. Let's say from a dead lighter, for example. Because, you know, I have a multi tool with a thread in it and I'm like this kind of um, teasing it so similar to getting like belly button lint or dryer lint now it would take a little bit but it's possible uh, another thing is as pre-filter for larger particles for, so either for water or you know for your mouth for whatever reason. Also, you know, it's not gonna be the best. You're not gonna be able to remove, you know, micro microbes with it, but this could be used as a pre-filter. Maybe to help you in a smoky area. At least buy you more time. You know, especially if you're in a smoky area and you know you're using this in conjunction with uh, water. So you got this wet, you know, laying as low to the ground as you can, that kind of thing. You know, you learned that in school and stuff like that. In terms of house fires or building fires, stay as low as you can. Because heat rises and a lot of that darker smoke's up higher. And it'll buy you more time. And of course, because if this was wet, it'll help keep you a little bit cooler. Which also it'll do that too, but it'll. Um, so when you're breathing in, you're not just breathing in hot air. And li literally burning your lungs. So it'll buy you more time. 
So yeah, if it like I said, if it's common, you can soak it in water, use it to keep cool, and to a certain degree, you could probably pick up dew water with it, transfer water with it, so it can help with the water thing, or water uh, section. Uh, it can help you regulate core body temperature to a certain degree. You know, so sort of helps you with the shelter. I mean, I've used this, that's this specific one, but I've used bandanas to, with, in conjunction with a hat, like a baseball hat, to keep mosquitoes off my backside, off my, the back of my neck. So they have to come in front of me, if that makes any sense. Or I can see them and, you know, swat them away and be like, Whew. So basically it would be over top, well, like I would put it on, and then put on my hat. So this could also provide some shade to a certain degree. And of course if it's wet, you know, it'll help buy you more time in the heat. This, if it's clean, you could use it for medical uses. For like cuts or whatever you know that would probably be like a last ditch effort if you got nothing else and you probably want to make sure your bandana is clean if you're gonna do it for that reason or at least sterilize it in some way let's see uh, what else now a bright color bandana so orange yellows maybe even white could be used for signaling purposes if you know you need that and another thing is now this can go for like a green blues or reds or pinks or whatever you can also use it now let me open this up here so I'm laying this down a little old school with a modern twist let me specifically welcome you with a hi Like I said, everyone that comes in, you're getting welcome with a hi from me, from this thing that I just made, <laughs> specifically for this live stream, like five minutes before I started. So, wow. Well. Alright, uh, let me see here, I know, I think Wendy Glove took off, didn't she? Or, no, someone else has taken it off. Oh, it's Val. Okay, Val. No, no problem, Val. Thank you for taking the time to come by. I appreciate it. And for all your channel support, Val. I I know I say it all the time, but I seriously mean it. You know. Anyways. Okay, anyways. Coming back to the bandana here. Another thing you could use this for. Now, like I said, if it's a bright, brighter color, yellow, red, maybe orange, white, you can use it for signaling purposes during the day. Now, it's at, if it's at nighttime, or in darker situations, or there's probably some other things. If you took a headlamp, light source, a torch, as in a flashlight. Sorry, there's some weird sound outside, and <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. It's just distracting me. Anyway, so if you took like a headlamp, like what I had here, so I'm just gonna turn it off, turn it on on the side here. Wrap the bandana. You can have the bandana on the inside, on the inside. You can have the light source on the inside. And I've shown this before, but you can also see, use the bandana as a diffuser for the light. Now this will work better with a lighter type of bandana, and you could use this maybe in conjunction with like something like paracord, rope, chain, stuff like that. 
and pardon the sirens. <laughs> I can't control that and I had to leave the window open because it was quite warm in here. But, you know, you spin this. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna close the window here real quick. Yeah, the joys of live streaming, right? <laughs> if it's not a plane going by, it's an ambulance, police, fire truck going by. Anyways. So you would wrap this up and basically you you can use it to help you spin your flashlight so you can make what's called a buzz saw signal or a signal light halo. So you basically would spin it like this in a circle and a circle of light depending how wide it is. If you have extra cordage like paracord like six feet of paracord including your arm length arm length you can make a halo, a signal type of halo, a buzz saw signal that's like 12 feet wide that could be easily be uh, noticeable especially if the contrast of the light color to the background is very high so something like this, oh, oops, don't want to shine it in everyone's faces but um, I was going to say was, yeah, about the contrast, so at nighttime offset this would work. Now, in terms of like, you know, hypothetically speaking, you're stuck in a building, it's on fire, you can't get out. For whatever reason, it's a high-rise skyscraper, tall building, right, and you're forced to do this, obviously. If you were to do it like this, a darker bandana might be better. Like there's other things that give you use, obviously, but as long as the bandana in this case can let the light still go through, because since everything's so bright around you, uh, a light halo that's blue might stand out more in comparison to the flames in behind you, for example. You know, obviously use your own breast judgment. If there's better items to use, better things, then use that. But anyways. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the Ranger bands. Bicycle inner tubes. There are so many more uses than one thinks. And one knows, oh yeah, yeah, I can use it like a rubber band. Oh, oh it burns for uh, like for fire. No, there's a little bit more than this can be used for. Now, obviously, a single one like this, maybe not as useful, but if you have a bunch of it, you know, people that bike a lot, you know, people go through tubes a lot. It's just how it is. Um, eventually, you find your tube or get a hole in it and then you can't repair it or whatever. Or you could be like my one friend who flanned <laughs> both his front and his back tire in a span of like 20 feet. <laughs> so, or something like just having one spare tube wouldn't help in that case because you just find both your tires. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that <laughs> firsthand. I didn't even think it was 20 feet. It might have been less than 20 feet. It might have been like. 15, <laughs> but that's for another story. Now, these these could be used maybe to help trigger something. Could be used to help you trigger something like an alarm system or something like that. A hair trigger on a trap. Well, like I said, obviously it burns, so you probably could use it for fire. Now, this is number dark, but similar to our light. Other types of rubber, it doesn't matter if it gets wet, per se, it'll still burn if you, especially if you apply an open flame to it. 
Now another thing you can use this for is, to a certain degree, it's probably not quite as great as using like, you know, something like rope and paracord and air cordages, but you can make cordage from this, it is possible. It's going to be more stretchy, but it is possible. I mean, if you had the stuff, you know, I know Wendy, Wendy Love was talking about the medical thing, I mean, let's say if I had a cut on my finger, like you, you know, depending how wide I cut the ranger band, because the wide, like, the wider it is, I mean, the wider it is, the wider I cut it, so if I, if I was cutting this, I would cut it really thin, and it's going to stretch a lot more over something, but it's easier to pull it apart or break it just because it's thinner and the wider I make the ranger band it's gonna be stronger but I can't get around something as wide because it doesn't stretch as much now without like you know majorly forcing it and helping it along I mean let's see I let's say if I cut myself right here for example and you know I have a I have a band-aid one, and I wanted to apply some pressure, I probably could apply some pressure to a certain degree, to a certain degree. I'm saying I would always do it like this. Like I said, a lot of this stuff might be like last-ditch effort. You know, do it when you don't have that proper stuff with you for some reason. And you know, at times you have to improvise. So, so something like that. So if I had a cut right there, the rubber is holding it while my skin together, maybe applying some pressure. Now let's say if I had a little bit more of this, I probably could use it for something else. Similar to other types of cordage, just gonna be more stretchy. It's not gonna have, you know, the tensile strength like paracord or something like that. But it's a common item, and I mean, I, I get access to this stuff all the time. Everyone knows I bite, so. Let me put the ranger band away. You know, I gotta put the bandana away. <laughs> I always gotta remember every time I sh uh, show stuff on the channel, I gotta remember to put it away. So while I do this here, oh hey, thanks, Wendy. Look now, obviously, like I said, use it at your own risk. If you got better stuff or something that would definitely work better, like. You know, if you got tape, maybe use that instead of this, for example. I mean, I could be, you know, I actually keep the ranger band with this, just so, to keep the bandana, kind of minimize the space that takes up. So, I just keep that with it. Now, of course, what you could also do with with these is daisy chain together, similar to if anyone's made as a kid, <laughs> especially before the turn of the millennium or millenni millennium, <laughs> with using rubber bands to make a rubber a rubber band skipping rope. I guess in theory you probably could do it with ranger bands too. But that's some that that will be for another video. Anyway, so I felt the bandana. Oh, that's, I might as well roll it in. Roll it in the tape here. Of course, <laughs> I'm gonna use every pun 
<laughs> so, duck type of tape. Although, this isn't the duck type of brand, but it's apparently US made. Here's some 3M type of tape right here. This is more like vinyl. And of course, you know, grill tape. I just realized I'm running low on tape. I mean, you know, I've got them in bags and stuff like that, but it almost feels like I'm running low. But anyway, I saw a lot of the vinyl type of tape. Now, tape. Now, obviously, obviously, it wouldn't be a live stream or a video about multi-purposeness or function or usefulness if I didn't talk about tape. Tape, I mean like what they say, thousand one uses. It's not. It's not what you can do with tape, it's what can't you do with it. You know, the only real limit with tape is not your imagination. It's the amount you have. Like literally tape duct tape, especially, you know, stronger tape and stuff like that can do a whole lot of things. I mean, tapes have different characteristics too from somewhere more slick like this right here. You might have like some, uh, like uh, a tennis racket if you're into tennis, for example, or something similar to that racket type of sports. I mean, those have the characteristics of Maybe not being as strong for tensile strength, but they have more grip, for example. And it tends to stick to itself a little bit easier. Uh, let's see. I mean, masking tape, if you're painting too, you know, on corners or whatever, on, and stuff like that, so you don't get paint on the trim. But that's more like an everyday type of use I guess or home type of use let's see what else yeah I mean like tape you can use it as an improvised bandage like if you had like a piece of like that uh, like you had a bandage on it's not staying on for whatever reason you can use tape to help it keep it on there if you had like um a bandana, you cut a strip, you use it to wrap, wrap that cut that I have on that finger, use some tape just to keep it there so it doesn't move. To patch uh, for shelter, like on tarp, for example. I mean, I've seen it once people, I've, I've patched. A lot of stuff with tape. I've patched up a dry bag before with tape. <laughs> but that'll be for another story. And of course tape is also flammable too, so it can help with fire too. Now if you're using a... F now I believe that they say that duck uh, grill tape's a little bit better for something like that over air tapes. Like, and you know... It, It'll burn with an open flame like later matches, stormproof match, striking a worm match, zippo, etc. <laughs> etc. Et if you're using sparks, probably not that will work with like sparks from a dead lighter. Probably not. It's probably not. You're not gonna be able to get it fine enough, or the sparks from a dead lighter are not hot enough. But something from like a ferro rod, for example shred it up so it's more fibrous expose more surface area so it becomes more like uh, stringy yeah you can start that up now if you use this for fire if you use tape for fire you know it's some really stark smoke and it, do it as a last ditch thing like, I wouldn't normally start a campfire with duct tape or use it with it because you get it on your skin because it's in a molten state or a liquid state that's an instant blister instant first degree burn and it's gonna suck 
Now, tape can also be used to a certain degree if you have a, a hot spot on your foot, something like that, just to protect the skin, especially if a blister is forming, for example. So let me see. Oh wow, that's so awesome, Windy Love. I didn't real. I... I didn't realize your husband did something like that. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, you gotta send me pictures of that, just for, just for kicks. Just a few pictures, just so I can get an idea of it. I mean, like, I know I can watch stuff on YouTube, and but actually knowing someone that actually does it, that's different. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Tape will always be handy. Now, it's one of those things that, you know, everyone can agree on. It's usefulness, even beyond survival. So, anyways, coming back to the survival part uh, of it. I'm not, I'm not sure how maybe it could help with the food part of it. I'm not. It'd be kind of iffy. You probably would need some additional things when it's possible. Because you can, like, make some sort of cordage with it, too. It's possible. I kind of consider this kind of similar to cordage. Or, like, tape is more like sticky cordage. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, let's see here. What else? I mean... Tape is one of those things that we all use, I mean, for repairers, too. All the way to, you know, something that may be quite common is... You break, you, you break something, and you're taping it up. You break glasses, you break your glasses, you break the frame, you're using tape. Uh, so, you know, coming into the non-survival type of situation, more like, more common, maybe every day, every so often, so something like that, break your glasses, for example, I've done that before, use tape, obviously, you've seen people doing that, and, you know, while they're w waiting to see the opt optometrist, and, you know, the eye doctor, and get new glasses, new prescription, they're like, oh, I might as well get a new prescription, all right, but they need to be able to see, so they use tape. All right. Um, let's see. Maybe you drop your remote for your TV. <laughs> you broke the battery compartment or whatever, and you're using tape. I mean, something like that. Hey, maybe you're one of those the gamers out there with a gaming channel. Because I've done it before, too. I've broken a controller, and I had to patch it up with tape until I got a new one <laughs> so I mean there's so many uses for tape and I have a whole you know I have a video on how to store tape layered method the roll method the card a wrap around method they all work and again with their own pros and cons I mean like how many people know that people would, like, put, would put tape around their arm like this? Maybe because they're doing something or whatever. Oh, of course, those packages, if you're using clear, those packages you're sending out to air channels and, you know, people that you want to give things to or whatever, you're using tape on the box. You're probably not using grill or duct tape, but, you know, you're using clear tape. Now with the clear tape, 
again, if you have enough tape, you can do almost anything. The only limit to tape is like, not your imagination, but how much you have. Because, you know, it'll dictate how much surface area you have to cover. But if you had enough clear tape, in theory, you probably could, and especially if you, like, stick it together, it might be possible to make a sore still. Now, obviously, like, that's one of those things, like, probably very unlikely that anyone would do. But it's possible. It's not outside the realm of possibility. You're more likely to use, like, a clear, like, garbage bag or something instead. And of course, you know, you can make containers from these, if need be. So basically, if you were making a container, you would use something as a mold. Maybe your hand or whatever. You know. And then use uh, this M&M container here. Candy container right here. If I was making a mold, I can use this as a mold for the duct tape. So the sticky side out. Blah blah blah. Wrap it around so it conforms to the container. Put tape over top so it's so the sticky stuff is stuck together. And voila, I got a container that I can use. Maybe not ne necessarily to boil water, but I could carry water. Maybe even use it as to help me make a filter of some sort. That's a possibility. Wow, that's crazy, Windy Love. That's crazy. So it went through this, the sole of it, the boot and the steel. That's what you're saying, Windy Love? The steel has like, what? What's the melting point of steel again? It's like, what? 900,000 degrees Fahrenheit? That's insane. And you're saying it like that, that means it has so much thermal energy that it and it lasted that long. Oh wow. Oh well, you're talking about chemicals. So it could have been like uh, some sort of acid or something like that. That ate through it. That it looked like a burn mark, but it's actually a chemical burn. But anyways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And see, this is why I have tape with me all the time. Just because, you know, it's not too heavy for what it is, you know, depending on how much you bring. I mean, very useful, especially for people that wear glasses. I mean, you know, you got spare glasses, you know, that's cool and all. But let's say you don't have them with you at that moment. Because, you know, you went to work, you didn't bring spare glasses. Something happened, I don't know, whenever, right? Then what? <laughs> there might be other options, but I mean, something like tape, you know, it's functional. It's not only the nicest, but it's functional and you'll be able to get through the day until you get home to your spare glasses, fill up a new prescription for, and, you know, see the opt optometrist, the eye doctor, and get a new pair, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, <laughs> you know, I literally could stick to the tape for like the next like 30, 40 minutes, but I don't want to overroll and stick to the tape too much. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, thinking about it for a second here, a lot of this tape is usually on a... Uh, on a cardboard type of circle, cylinder type of shape, right? So like right here, you'll see right here. In theory, that's cardboard. Cardboard can burn. For like, obviously, right? Cardboard to a certain degree can be used to stroke the blade, a cutting tool. So if you actually had the roll with you, mm, might be possible. Might be possible to use it as a straw, but also you don't have to get access to that. You would have to pull it away or whatever. 
but that's just like you know something else that comes with the tape. Um, let's see. Actually, there is one thing about the tape. Oh yeah, there is. I keep forgetting about it. You can make instead of using fenders on an arrow, or what's that called, fletchings, like on a bolt or an arrow, for example. You can make them from tape too. So technically, it might help you with the food or defense to a certain degree. To a certain degree, also. I mean, well, I guess with the defense thing, I mean, let's say you have no cordage with you. I mean, and I'm gonna use this as an example. You know, some sort of. Uh, Gunmen, gun person, I should say, to be more correct about it. Shooter, for example, right? And you've got to barricade yourself in to a place. That tape could be this tape could be used to wrap the handle around something, so it's harder for the door to open, for example. And of course, you know you're barricading yourself in, so it could be possible to help you with that. Now with the transportation part, if you had those shoes, or it could be used to repair your shoes, so you can actually walk back home, to get back home, for example, or maybe you got a hole in your shoe for whatever reason. Hey, thank you very very much, Wendy Love. I appreciate your channel support. And take care. Anyways, let's roll away from the tape. Now let's look at cordage. Now I, I have a whole live stream talking about cordage, but there's also like more cordage and you know there's various cordage, has its own characteristics and stuff like that. So let's say bank line, everyone knows what paracord is, parachute type of cordage that has inner strands. And Floss. Now, clearly these will help you with shelter. Because you can tie things together. Tie down a tarp. Make anchor points for a tarp. Or even a tent. Or for a fly. A uh, rain fly, for example. Now, cordage, depending on the cordage, could help you in fire. You know, not necessarily uh, something like jute twine that can burn, or um, something that has like some sort of paracord that has an inner strand of wax coated twine. You know, but something more primitive like a bow drill. I mean, I've tried bow drill. It's harder than seeing some kind of smoke, but. Hopefully one of these days I'll be able to blow. We'll make a little coal and blow it into flame and put it, I mean, put it in a bird's nest, tinder bundle and blow it into flame. Still working on it. I mean, cordage like uh, floss, bank line, and of course fishing line it's not, can help you with the food part of it. Traps. I mean, this kind of bank line that I have right here could be used for fishing purposes. Floss, for example, could be used to attach an arrowhead onto a shaft. 
maybe it's something that you improvised or if you know how to flint nap or you brought something with you or whatever so this can be used and it sticks to itself now as far as I know floss is well wait like 10 pound test as far as I know I've tried it before because I've hung a weight with 10 pounds it lifted it and as soon as I started swinging it it broke so you know I guess it's about 10 pounds it'll be good while I got off arrow shaft I mean an arrow shaft on an arrowhead to secure an arrow for example let's see here what else now coming back to the one I was talking about with the tape this could help you with the f safety or the fence type of part two to a certain degree if you had to like stitch yourself up if you had to it would be a last ditch thing or you got nothing else and for some reason you can't apply pressure I mean it'd be one of those last ditch things I do I rather have like actual like sutures and stuff like that I rather have that and that's probably better probably <laughs> it is better but coming back to the defense thing here or safety part of the categories that I've been talking about there's two things that cordage can do for you it can allow you to tie things together like I've said in cordage live stream so if you had some paracord not now I'm gonna use the bank line as the example but obviously I wouldn't use bank line specifically for it but again if you had to deny access into the room that you're in because of some attacker for whatever reason I don't you know whatever the reason is and maybe it's you're just using it to slow them down so to buy you more time so you know you've already let's say called 911 called police but you know it takes time to get there the transportation part right so it's still don't take time maybe it's a minute or two but that minute or two might take a seem like a long time you know and you fortify yourself into that one room for example you can't escape for whatever reason well cordage could help you there now also you could improvise that with like power cables ethernet cable maybe not specific headphones it's gotta be strong enough but to a certain way of like lashing it to a door the door so the door can't swing open all the way so they would have to like really whoever you know is putting you in that position they have to try a lot harder to kind of get in because you kind of made it an extra obstacle well not an obstacle but like made it harder for them to get in if that makes any sense I think it would just depend on like the location and stuff like that where you're wrapping around the handle and maybe there's like some bar next to it so there's like a handle for the doorknob and there's like some metal railing I don't know or something nearby use cordage tie it together so make the door much harder to open and let's say you there's still a lock on it and stuff like that you're making it even harder for them so they might choose a different target an easier target or buy you more time until someone can help you now something else in could do with it Now anyone that's into known about medieval times, well, let's just say you can make something like a ball and chain the flail, but 
usually a flail is better for our offense and not really meant for our defense. Because it generally doesn't have the defensive capabilities. But, you know, it's possible. You know, if you got nothing else, and for some reason you got no cutting tool, like a knife with you, that you could use instead, and there's nothing else really available, no random hammer, can't even find a pen, <laughs> you know, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I wouldn't say it'd be the most ideal thing, but, you know, it might help. And let's say, uh, let's just say, for, hypothetically speaking, you got a whole bunch, you had three people with, two other people with you, right? Some sort of attack from someone armed, whatever. You manage to get them down, well, you gotta, you know, tie them up, right? So you feel safe again. You know, until, like, you know, the authorities can get there and stuff like that. So some cordage would help. If, you know, if you had nothing else. There was nothing else around for whatever reason. You know, for lack of a better word, for, for lack of a better term, or word, hog tied them. So they're on their stomach and, you know, it's, that's very hard to get out of. Hey, thanks Harmony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Special hi to Harmony here. Thank you for taking the time to drop in. I appreciate it. So Cordage, and also Cordage can burn too. So Cordage can burn, could really help you in a lot of categories, fire, shelter, clearly, water, like, you can use it like a wig, for whatever reason, food, yeah, safety, security, yeah, it could help you with that, navigation, maybe, maybe, with some knowledge and some skill, you might be able to do it. Transportation. You break your shoelace, you get some extra paracord and a bracelet. That might help. Or to make improvised sandals. So, I mean, cordage, if I think about it, could some def definitely not be useful. And definitely quite multi purpose. Of course, the, the you know, it depends what kind of cord that you use and stuff like that and of course it's got its own pros and cons you know would I rather have like a bunch of con balls or a bunch of jute twine you know I might choose the jute twine <laughs> let's just say because it's more multi-purpose I can use it like cordage I can still fray it up for fire storm and all that other stuff Now, I mentioned this in a, a different video about what I, I think it was called the 7 plus 3 items for an SHTF. And I mentioned this before in different videos. And I've left comments on different videos and such and such about it. But garbage bags, specifically contractor bags, the thicker. And bigger they are, well, the more you can store inside. Now this, I'm not really, honestly, this was a very, very, very common item, a garbage bag. Contractor bags, I can get that for like, 20 pack for like 10 bucks here in Canada, give or take. Prices might vary in different parts of the world. Usually the color is going to be black, but you can't get air colors for garbage bags like these or something similar, kitchen bags, and you know, they're going to be thinner. There's transparent bags, clear bags, recycling blue type of bags and stuff like that, so you know, some things might work better depending on the color. 
So let's, um, so first and foremost, the container. We're using it as a container to store things, whatever. Now, this could also be used for containing something to keep it drier. Especially if certain areas that are prone to, you know, flooding, heavy rains and stuff like that. You know, bank, garbage bags might be very useful. At least, could help you try to keep things drier. So a garbage bag, if you were like camping or whatever, well, a bag or a pet, like a mat because you put leaves inside, for example, right? Yeah, exactly, redneck survivalist. And speak of which, let me welcome you with a special hi for me. Hey, and I actually have red in this high, <laughs> and it's green. <laughs> so yes, thank you for, very much for taking the time to drop in there. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I think I'm back here, for some reason I lagged out in there. My OBS kicked me out. Well, not kicked me out, but disconnected, so. <laughs> I'm glad I was paying attention, so. Anyways, coming back to the shelter part. And welcoming the redneck survivors. Oh, just, just in case something happened in there and <laughs> there's a hiccup, anyways. And that's why I kind of stopped what I was doing for temporarily. Alright, anyways, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alright, so yeah, shelter, emergency poncho. Now, I've actually used the contractor bank as an emergency rain poncho before. Hence why I started to carry a garbage bag with me as an EDC item. So I don't have to go for that. So I don't have to be soaking wet when it's only 50 Fahrenheit or t plus 10 Celsius out and it was pouring out like in those temperatures if you're dry it's just inconvenient you know or uh, it's not so bad but when you were when I was soaked slight breeze I felt so cold and literally, you know, start to understand why they say, Ooh, water can pull up to, like, heat away from you 25 times, 30 times, whatever the number, you know, it's an arbitrary number. But heat away from you faster than the air. And something like, you know, like metal will be like 50 times. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that one night, oh, I still remember it too. It wasn't pretty. I mean, I made it back. I was fine. You know, I put on some dry clothes when I got back. Felt better. I wasn't out that long. So, just a quick sh warmer shower was fine in that case. But uh, if I was out longer, obviously I would have changed into dry clothes and gone into, like, uh, you know, blankets. I tried to warm up my core back up. Um, so yeah, anyway, so yeah, shelter. Now clearly, I can burn this if I wanted to. So, you know, you can help with fire. Indirectly helping with fire to keep firewood dry. 
or Tinder dry. You know, and certain 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 little things. I mean, certain little things. So, so some of this might extend out to like uh like a grocery bag or whatever. I'm just using garbage bag as an example, but you know, grocery bag smaller, right? garbage bag's bigger, and yada yada. Hello, Farmall fanatic. Let me welcome you with a special hi here. So, yes, let me welcome you with a special hi here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Since that hiccup on my stream, I'm just making sure uh, the image is still going. Because, like I said, I I always have it playing back, but muted, of course, right? So, I was just checking up on it. Anyways, so welcome. Uh, so, yeah, coming back to this. Obviously, this a garbage bag can help you gather water or repel water depending on how you see it for food you know obviously it's a container so I can lift things you know maybe I'm lifting that bank of food off the ground in the tree so a bear can't get to it or something like that you know for example So let's see, a safety, you know, first aid, feeling safe, defense type of section, what they say, I'm not, I'm not familiar with this, I know about, I know about it, ah, what's that called, uh, a sucking chest wound, I'm pretty sure they use plastic, or it, you're capable of using plastic for it, so. Maybe, you know, I know I'm no medical expert. I've never experienced that, obviously, and I don't know anyone that ex experienced that, but I've seen things. And as far as I know, it will use this plastic, so you now usually they would use like a a small, smaller sandwich bag or whatever, but you know, I don't see why it wouldn't work with. A garbage bag if you had it providing it's clean and maybe not used initially um, let's see here you might be able to use it as cordage and you know well actually you can use it as cordage because I know Because I've actually used it for cordage before. Because <laughs> I have this braided <laughs> contractor bag in front of me here. Now, obviously, braiding takes a lot longer. If time's at, you know, crunch time or whatever, uh, time's the essence, you don't have enough time, you probably not have enough time to braid it, but. And to a certain degree, you can use it to help you make a flail, but flails are generally not good for defensive purposes. Good for offensive, but, you know, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and for the transportation part, well, you could be using it, free, you know, some freak thunderstorm. You weren't as prepared as you as you would have liked at that time. You're only wearing regular running shoes. Feet are starting to get wet, or or something like that. You could be using a garbage bag. Now this is probably more likely you don't use grocery bags because you're gonna need to, right? To keep your feet dry. For example. And I mean, I've done it a few times here and there, as I deem it necessary. 
I have a video on that too. I guess to a certain degree, depending on the color of the garbage bag or whatever, grocery bag, kind of the strips, use it as a marker of some sort for whatever reason, for your shelter. Or like, have a little white strip from a grocery bag by like a snare or something like that, or a trap or something like that. So you can visually know where it is. If you don't didn't know already. Anyways, something else here is pens now clearly you know a pens could be used for self defense especially if they're you know full metal you know also to extend uh, you know tactical pen and stuff like that um let's see what else can help you signal too, or communicate. So you know, to a certain degree, help you with that navigation part. Maybe you're on a big uh, hill and seeing the distance and marking it on a piece of paper, or you're taking a piece of paper and be like, you're writing something down like, okay, there's a mountain right there. There's some water I see over here. Trees or a bunch over here or whatever, right? Stuff like that, so as reference, right? So you know, pen and paper probably go hand in hand. And of course, I guess the paper you can burn and whatever. Uh, again, these could be pens can be used for a whole host a whole host of reasons. You can make signaling devices with it mm, might help you with fire might help you with water might help you with the defense part or fuel the safety part I'm not sure how it could help you with the transportation part there might be a way but it might be one of those you know Isolate, not isolated, but once in a blue moon, rare chance of it happening. You can probably more likely have something else to repair it, like tape, for example. Of course, you know, you can wrap tape around with pens and stuff like that. And there's one way of storing tape, too. So let me just move my marker back here. So I'll probably go for like another 5-10 minutes here, give or take, roughly. Because I actually ha am trying to plan for another live stream later. And you'll see an event notification for it, hopefully. If you see an event notification, obviously you're going to see it. So yeah, those were just a handful of items that I would consider multi-purpose or multifunctional you know there might not be the most ideal thing at times sometimes there might be better things to use you know these things items you know the relatively multi-purpose like I said items that I like to carry for its multi-purposeness
especially the contractor bags. There's, there's something about the contractor bags. Maybe it's from that time I got stuck in the rain and had to use one. I got soaked, you know, learned from that lesson. Maybe it's from that, but, you know, it's one of those things I highly consider it's worth the money. Well, not worth the money, but it's worth the cost, the space that it takes up, and stuff like that. You know, and stuff like that, so. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's see here. So, like I said, you know, the items that you choose or whatever can vary. And the reasons you want to use it for the task can vary. I was just kind of using uh, survival as, you know, all well, these seven seven survival sections as as an example and I tried to throw in you know some more day-to-day -day things or an everyday type of thing you know that you might you know you know obviously stuff like tape glasses broken remotes temporary making fixes Using garbage bags for whatever reason, even for work purposes. That cutting tool to cut open your box from like Amazon, that mail and stuff like that. I mean, it could be coming back to tape, could be repairing something just so you can buy some more time until you can get a new one. Or get back somewhere where you can get a new one. And again with the and again with the tape, the tape, and the garbage bags. I've used them for like non-survival reasons. From like where you use, especially with the tape, anyone that's had their vehicle broken in, for example. your window breaks <laughs> when they do that so you're using like cardboard to tape to patch it up until you know you can get a new window or whatever maybe you're using a garbage bag or recycling bag so the water guy doesn't get in temporary I had to do that for a friend you know it was a shame that happened but you know you know that's what we had at that time Let's see here, what else? Yeah, I think I'm pretty good on it now. So, let's see here, just to recap. From the beginning, kind of what I was saying about the multifunction or multi purpose or how useful something is, you know, like I said. A lot of things that are multi-purpose and stuff like that are great, are good for doing a lot of things, but may not be great for doing something specific. And again, I'll use the multi-tool as an example, a screwdriver, it's too big, it's not deep enough, where you need a pre precision screwdriver that's skinnier than you can get down the hole so you can actually get the screw out, so you can open that battery compartment for that kid's toy. For example, for example. Now, like a garbage bag, you know, it might not be as durable as a tarp, for example. And that garbage bag for water may not be as great compared to like an actual water container that garbage bank again because I've done it before <laughs> with the rain 
might have a smell to it after a certain period of time. Or, and of course you gotta make holes in it and stuff like that. So it might not be as great as using a actual rain poncho with a hood and a zipper and stuff like that. So I want to say a special thank you to everyone that dropped by this live stream here. From Farmall Fanag, Reddick, the Reddick Survivalist, <clears throat> Wendy Love, I know Harmony dropped by, and of course, uh, Valerie. Thank you for taking the time to drop in. I appreciate the channel support from all you guys. And if you're watching this later on the replay, you know, thanks for taking the time to watch the replay. <clears throat> and I hope everyone enjoyed this. Now, I actually did record this before, but I think I like this a little bit better because I had added some more things in and kind of related it to the seven sections that I have for survival and, you know, more day-to-day -day things. So in the last two minutes here, I'm gonna write something here. <laughs> I'm gonna use that writing tool. Ooh, I'm gonna use that writing tool. So I'm gonna write something here. So I'm gonna just kind of bury it up here. Write down what I'm not right. Why? Just, just cause I can. Just to show a little bit more creativity in this. Let's see here. One, okay, well, I guess I can't find that. What's my head? Anyways, <laughs> special thank you to everyone that I wrote down. With a little bit more time, I probably could make it look nice. <laughs> so if I did something like that, I probably could make it nicer. <laughs> I guess if I had solar option, I'd have a second and grave something in, burn some characters in. If I had something like mustard or whatever, I guess I could make it yellowish or whatever but anyways but the card still is true though thank you from CR not only to the people that show up live but have supported the channel you know you might not support everything but you're still generally supporting and channel supporting with comments constructive comments uh, you know, and feedback, even providing your own ideas or stories, you know, where I can get to know some of you a little bit better, and stuff like that. So, let me, it's outro time, right? Yep, it's outro time. Oh, wait. Let me see some. I was on the table, didn't I? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. There's something on. I see. I have something on the table. I'm trying to find it. 
Oh, there it is. Okay, anyways, time for the outro time. So as the world changes so much oneself to reach a new level of skill and knowledge, one must practice. A single person can't help everyone in this world, but one person, regardless of age, gender, race, nationality, I think I said age, and you know, age is obsolete to a certain degree, right? If you're like one, maybe not so much. If you're 99, maybe not so much, but you know, anywhere in between. It's all good. Anyone can help someone in this world. And until the next video, thank you for all the channel support and all that great stuff. So take care and peace out from the guy that's 98.6% of the time in creation mode and learning just like you guys. It's peace out from. CR, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you for dropping in, and take care.